<laughs> yeah, you welcome to the second and conclusive segment of the de development focus with Judy Ojo on ITV. Um, my second guest is regularly seated. I have with me a f immediate past honorable commissioner for information strategy, uh, information and strategy in Adamawa State. Uh, currently a board member of Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, NBC. So we already have um, uh, <laughs> protection from uh, a speech and fake news, <laughs> but we will not, we will not, uh, we will not, we will not engage in any fake news or a speech, so that we don't get sanctioned. We will not take that for granted. Uh, congratulations, uh, thank you, thank Aladia you, thank, thank you, very, thank you very much, recent, my brother. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Membership uh, appointment into the membership board of. Uh, Nigeria Broadcasting Commission. Yeah. You are also an APC chief team. Uh, I think I need to also put that out. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> a lot is happening uh, in terms of preparations for 2023 general elections. Uh, the train has left the station. Right now, all the 18 registered political parties are in a, a, in a frenzy to organize credible free and fair party primaries between April 4 and June 3rd. That is a window that INEC has given to um, all the registered parties to conduct their primaries. Incidentally, almost all the parties are giving May dates. Is it that they are not ready or they didn't want to be the be the early catch um, because no, no party to the best of my mind have chosen to do primary in april any anyway, april is even uh, winding down in the next couple of days no, we'll I, I i i think uh, two two issues uh, or three issues uh, came into play you know if you remember there was this uh, dilly dallying about uh, the electoral act yeah which uh, took quite some time, you know, even before the passage and uh, the signing into law by the president, the assent he gave to the act also took a little time before it was given. And, 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 and that, was, that was supposed to have been the guiding principle upon which all the processes were to take place. Uh, so parties had to wait because you could take a decision and then it turns out to to, uh, to be to, to run foul of the law, which means it was an, it, it would have been a nullity mm. as a decision. Then after the law again, INEC had to give out guidelines. So INEC had to study the law itself, sit down and look at and coin out some guidelines uh, uh, pursuant to that. And and INEC too, you know, uh, rather than keep to the former campaign uh, period of 90 days that was required extended the campaign period and so pulled the process backward a little you know so so, so to say so so so, so the first thing was uh, the legal hurdles mm. then the second thing that came into play was that uh, for the greater part of april we we had the twin uh, religious programs of the Lenten period mm. leading okay. to the Easter and, and then, then the Ramadan. Ramadan. Okay. And, and so this was, this, this, this was a very uh, wrong period for any party to start talking about choosing candidates and, and, and issues of that nature. M most of people have gone on Umrah now. Some people have gone on Umrah, some people are even within, but... Uh, you know, for example, this, this, the last 10 days of Ramadan are strategic for Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Even conflict. people people who are within the town, some people have uh, relocated from their homes to the mosque for the last mm. 10 days until for prayers, for prayers or mm. something like that. So oh, okay. uh, that, that, that makes sense, actually. So, 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 so that, from that, May now, next week, uh, there will be a lot, week, of, a lot um, of activities will take place. Political and, activities, yeah. But uh, again, if you look at it, uh, I think we our democracy is too regimented. Too regimented. You know, if 
we, we, we would have no business with somebody telling you you must do this at this time, you must do this at this time. I think we should just set up a minimum standard. My, my own opinion is that we just set up a minimum standard and, and, and comply with it. We're taking this whole thing so serious, so tough, that it's, it, it's, it's, it's not really sincerely democracy. We, 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 we've taken too much from our years under military rule, you know, that we, 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 we are regimented. Mm. We are regimented. Oh, oh, okay, Alaji, let, let, let's... Uh, well, election is a rule-based enterprise. Um, the rules have to be obeyed. So, um, <clears throat> one issue that has generated a lot of furore in the recent, <laughs> in the recent <laughs> past is the cost of nomination form, expression of interest and nomination form. Have you ever run elections? Uh, what's the difference between <laughs> expression of interest and nomination form, if you, if you can? No, run I, I, I think um, expression of interest is to say, look, I am interested in going for a particular office in the party. We, 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 we're getting it wrong because the parties expect you to buy the two at the same time. Mm. You know, it should have been, you know, one activity takes place before the other. Mm. You go collect a form that enables you to express interest that look i want to vie for this position that will determine the it will enable the party determine for example the number of nomination forms they will print <laughs> okay then the, the the arrangements they will make you know this the, 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 the it would have given them an opportunity to do a situation analysis before releasing the forms for nominations. This was the, ori the, the original intent. But because uh, we don't have time and because we have, over, over the years, we have developed a norm, a, a, a kind of uh, culture, if you may, of people buying the two forms at the same time, we buy the two forms at the same time. And I, I think the expression of interest was supposed to have been a process that enables parties to plan the nomination process. Mm. But now they do them all at the same time, and okay. here we are. Uh, it, the, the, then I, it occurs to me, as you are speaking, that if you are not a nominee of the party, you don't have to pay for nomination for. Maybe we should just have limited political parties to collection of whatever on expression of interest. So. I'm, I'm expressing my interest to say I want to run. So yeah. if you want me to pay one million or five million for that, maybe that would be justifiable. But nomination, not all last France will get nominated. I, yeah, I, yeah I, but, I, but again, you know, you have expressed interest. Okay. Uh, the next stage is for you to be nominated. And but not all of them will be nominated. Not all of them will be nominated. So, so, but is it not better to say, okay, since you are now the nominee of the party, pay your nomination for you? <laughs> you know, it's like the, the, going to embassy. If you go to embassy, <laughs> they collect visa fee from you. And if then they, not, de, they, they deny you the visa. But you see, it's a, it's a, these are systems we have developed. Uh, all over the world that are actually faulty uh, but the moment you go through the nomination process the nomination process too is a process yeah it uh, is uh, so the moment you want to go through the nomination process and we, and since we don't know who it, it will please uh, god almighty to have nominated so all of you are assumed to be nominated until the electorate or the party members decide that it's GD or J that should be any, nominated. Any, <laughs> any, uh, uh, honorable. Yeah. So PDP and more recently APC has been in the eye of the storm. Yeah. People have said we now have presidency for sale. In fact, that's how Nigerian pilots captured uh, it's last Thursday's mm. uh, headline. <laughs> Presidency for sale. Screaming headline. 100 million. 
governorship 50 million, uh, Senate 20 million, House of Reps 10 million, State House of Assembly 2 million. Everything is a million. Yeah. Uh, is there a justification for that, sir? I, I think, honestly speaking, the, uh, the, the figures are on the high side. That there is no argument about. But there is a justification for putting uh, amount of money to serve as nomination fees for, for two basic reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, the seriousness of a candidate is dependent on the ability of the candidate to invest into the venture. Mm. If you make the venture, you know, a, a venture that is not worth investing into, a lot of people who are very unserious will come in and you won't even know who actually deserves the attention of uh, the party and the public and who does not. So I believe that to separate uh, what, you know, normally we, the media, had uh, coined as contenders and pretenders, mm. to separate those two, there's a need for some fee. You have to invest a little into the, the process to show that you are interested. And then secondly, as in the case of the APC, and I can tell you this, uh, you can take it to the bank. The, the, the current leadership of APC believes that there is no need for the party to either approach the president and ask him to dip his hands into the national coffers and give them the money with which to run the process or go to the governors and ask them to dip their hands into the coffers. There is also no need for powerful individuals, so-called godfathers that we normally talk about, who own parties there's no need for them also to be approached so that they can fund the process because when the process is funded by interested parties you cannot guarantee the independence of uh, the, mm. the, the the process itself so the, the the apc is saying look let the process fund itself and the process is a long process uh, yesterday the guidelines came out I don't know if you've seen the guidelines no, no, the seen. guidelines have come out uh, the NWC had already obtained the, the mandate uh, to act on the powers of on NEC, the NEC yeah. for the period and uh, so the NWC has issued guidelines the guidelines uh, you know includes uh, the fact that it's uh, uh, it, 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 it's going to be like uh, a decision of NWC as to whether it will be direct primaries or indirect primaries. Okay. Whichever method they take go, is going to involve cost. Mm -hmm. If you are going to do indirect primaries, it then means that in all the, uh, the wards in the country, in the 774 local governments, all the wards, there will be elections. Mm. Which is, uh, and, and you have to send electoral officers, you have to do, you know, have uh, electoral materials, although it's uh, the option A4, modified option A4, okay. where people will line up, but it's, 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 it's a bit tedious. You know, you have uh, result sheets and the rest. If they're going to do indirect method, it then means that over 7,000 delegates would have to be put in one place. For the presidential. For the presidential, primaries. and in all the others, you know, the, the congresses, in the various states and the constituencies. Uh, there are some, some senatorial districts, like in my state, there's a senatorial district that has nine local governments. Wow. Uh, be, but nine local government is almost uh, higher than the number of local governments in some other smaller states. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's higher than the number okay. of local governments in Bayasa. Exactly. So, and Bayasa then, has only eight, eight, local eight So you have, uh, that is just for one senatorial district. And then the, you have a House of Representatives. Uh, I know that uh, there is one that has about four local governments in my, in my state. So, so you know, it's, it's, it's quite a tedious thing. Whether you're going direct or indirect, and it's going to cost a lot of money. And for that amount of uh, uh, expenditure, you need to, to be independent of any influence by either the funders as individuals or funders as even entities like government. You need to have some independence. That is the, the thinking behind 
the fees that has been fixed by uh, the APC. Uh, how that will play out, we are waiting and we are watching, and we hope that it plays out very well. But, but yeah. let, let me ask you this, uh, Honorable. Yes, sir. It's after you've procured the expression of interest and nomination forms. Yes. You 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 will now face screening. Yeah. Uh, there there was an event I attended yesterday where one of the key speakers said he could not come because his party was doing screening for aspirants. Uh, I think PDP. Now, at the screening, we have seen some of the aspirants dropped and their monies are not returned or refunded to them. Is that fair to make this expression of interest and nomination forms uh, non-refundable even if you are bad uh, through, uh, if you are screened out by the screening committee uh, and you are not in a position to contest uh, after that. Is it not supposed to be? I, 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 let me also let me also refer you to uh, guidelines for the elections at all times. The guidelines indicate very clearly the qualifications for somebody who is buying for a particular position. If for any reason you do not have any of those qualifications, and you go and pick up a phone, you, you, you willingly walked into that trap yourself. It's mm. not, you, 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 you have turned the process into a joke. Let's look at it very, very clearly, my dear brother. The, the APC, for example, now, in their constitution, section 31, subsection 2, item 3, says, Anybody who wants to run for an office, who is holding a position, should relinquish that position 30 days before the nomination process. That is what is in the guidelines. It's in the constitution of the APC, and okay. that is in the guidelines, naturally. Wow. Okay. You know. So that's like uh, section 84, subsection 12 of the exactly. electoral Act. Exactly. But the, the, because the contention around section 84 had not been settled it may get up to supreme the court. supreme court and the apc is wary of the fact that they could nominate somebody who would be a valid candidate but the supreme court will rule in favor of section 84. And which is what happened uh, yesterday uh <laughs> the supreme court upheld the disqualification uh, of Andy Uba. Exactly. Uh, in the Anambra governor's So if, if he had that been... In the eye of the law, Andy Uba he, never participated. So if he had the, been the governor by yesterday, he would have he left, would have left. He so, would have left so because have of invalid nomination. Invalid nomination. And, and you know the, the, the party conducted direct primaries. Direct primaries. And now the court, both high courts, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, are saying Andy Uba was never a candidate in the November 6th. Uh, and, and this, the person who came second, I think he came second or third. Yeah, this is one. You know, so, so to avoid a situation like this, the APC had put safeguards by itself. In so so the, 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 the guideline now has spelled out that if you are holding political office, you have to resign before the primary. Now. Before the primary. 30 days before the primary. 30 days. So some people are working on a very tight rope now. On a tight Be rope. Because if, if you are going for presidential, if you are a presidential aspirant. 30th of, 30th of, uh, of April is your final you, day or something your final like that. Day. But if you are doing governorship and you have not resigned you by resign now. by now. You are not doing you, governorship. You are not so if you go and procure... Form. You have donated you just, to the you party. Just donated 50 you have million. donated 50 million to the party. <laughs> to, to so, so, so that's one. Mm. Then the screening is also very clear on other quali qualifications criteria. I have participated in screening of governorship uh, once, and I know the things we look for. Uh, somebody will come and tell you that, yes, uh, I forgot the certificates somewhere. Wow. You know, I mean, he forgot his certificate. Imagine. <laughs> or he doesn't have. Or he doesn't. Okay. Or, or that there was, he has actually changed his name.
from Jide Ojo to Ahmed Sajo, but uh, he, he didn't think it was necessary for him to go to the court and to validate, to validate the change of name. Mm. So you, some of his documents are reading the, uh, Jide Ojo, another are reading, you know. So people who know they have this kind of things, there is a window. The court system is an open system. You mm. can, if you go to do an affidavit for change of name, mm. th you, nobody stops you. If you want to put it on newspapers, newspapers will gladly collect their money and advertise. So why do you, you know, refuse? So there are many other things. There are people who have been convicted, you know, in court, mm. but they think that, you know, the conviction was not publicized. So, so nobody, the, nobody knew, will know. Yeah, nobody will know. Then somebody goes and brings it out and drops it during the screening. So there are many reasons for what, what about task clearance? Do you also request uh, to present your task clearance if you are running for office in APC? I have not seen tax clearance, but I have seen evidence of lack of bankruptcy. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you are, if you are bankrupt for whatever reason or declared bankrupt by a competent court of law or whatever, you are... So, 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 so the, the, the fault is with some of the aspirants. Aspirants. That you know... Uh, uh, why would you... I, I've seen... In fact, yesterday I met one gubernatorial aspirant uh, who I was told has already procured his... Uh, nomination form and expression of interest. But the guidelines are, it wasn't out as at the time exactly, he made that payment. Exactly. Shouldn't he have waited to every, when every, the guidelines every, is out? Every, every responsible aspirant is supposed to wait for the guidelines. Because the guidelines But there determine. are governors who have also who paid, already paid and, 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 and there are people who think that because they have contested elections before, okay, that is not going to be any difference. It's not going to be any different. Oh, okay, you could understand with those guys, but but look at you know sometimes where we get a problem also is every discussion now is about who wants to be president, who wants to be governor, mm. but eventually when the president is going to contest, he he has to have a running mate mm. who will contest with him so also the governor sure now sometimes you end up having a problem with the running mate because what you look out for in a running mate is somebody who can add to the electoral value of the ticket but that, that's, that's you overlook that, that's that's what uh, the price uh, by Elsa APC paid, paid in, in by Elsa. Elsa. We had the one with a wide margin, margin but, but they lost because of having an... Because it was only the electability of the running mate that was considered. They didn't consider all the discrepancies in the names. Within the system. Uh, so, so all of these things, if it turns out that you pick a running mate who has uh, discrepancies and... It, it there's no time for you to change the running mate, uh, then you lose your nomination fees. So we must look beyond our personal interest in picking the forms and paying for it to look at all the issues around the guidelines, the qualifications, and the, 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 the reasons for disqualification. They are all stated in the guidelines. So how, how do you avoid, uh, we are on the home stretch now, how do you avoid, how will APC avoid the repeat of Sanfara and, and Rivers in 2019, where the party lost. In fact, the, that of Sanfara, the election had been held, and the party was uh, uh, the party was instructed that uh, the Supreme Court said the party never had any candidate, and that all those who won should uh, seat their certificate of return to the uh, first runner home. In uh, Rivers, you never even had the APC contesting the election. So how will APC, as a chieftain, uh, what yeah. advice again, will you give your party? Again, this is exactly why the party said the nomination fees will be the only funds that would be used to finance the process. In all cases, what, uh, what we could say, you know, with certainty is that uh, there are likelihoods of certain individuals 
who had influenced the process of the nomination and had insisted that certain individuals must be, you know, because they're, they're paying the, 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 the fees for the process, they are determining the outcomes even before the process takes place. And so in all cases, you discover that where all these things happen is a level playing field was not given for the nomination process. We're hoping that this time around the party will give a level playing field. Uh, look at it very critically, you know. You do not determine outcomes before you start a process. For crying out loud, once you determine outcomes before you start a process, then that process is faulty ab initio. Okay, uh, we, 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 we now have to wind down. Um, last word, how do you avoid corruption and corrupt tendencies in the conduct of party primaries? People are paying so much. Imagine a House of Assembly member paying two million, a senator paying 20 million. And if you talk about the credibility of the process and some people trying to influence and muzzle their way, how do you think we can prevent a scenario where there will be millions of litigations arising from party nominations, uh, accusation of money exchanging hands by the committee uh, who went to conduct the primaries in the states and all of that. How, do we avoid, how will APC, your party, and the other parties, how will you avoid that kind of scenario playing out in the uh, forthcoming party primaries for 2023? I think that is a very difficult one. Let, me, let, me, let us be very honest with ourselves. We are working within an ecosystem. That ecosystem is itself, you know, invariably corrupt. You, don't, you, don't, you, you, you can't hide the fact that the entire system is corrupt. The political system, our democracy is transactional. Uh, money plays a key role and in, in, in all that and all that. What we are, the only advice we will give party leaders, and, 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 and we've said this, severally that they must demonstrate capacity to be above board. Once the leadership of the party is ready and willing to be above board, they will be able to run a system that is definitely above board. It doesn't matter who decides to corrupt who, but the, the onus of ensuring that the system is free, fair and credible and rest squarely on the leadership of the party at all levels. Thank you very much, Honorable Ahmed Sajo, uh, immediate past commissioner for information and strategy and uh, Adamawa State and member of the uh, National Broadcasting Commission uh, and National Broadcasting Commission, uh, Ramadan Karim. I wish you a happy either feature in, in advance. Um, I hope when next we call you, you will oblige us. At all times. Thank At you very time. much. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you have enjoyed this edition, please stay tuned. Next Wednesday is another time when we will bring you fresh edition of Development Focus with GDOJO. As I used to say, this program is open up for advert placement and uh, sponsorship. Uh, come do business with us. You will never regret it. Stay safe and stay blessed.